but no, it was it was it was hard for me to to break in and even bring out my own personality because I'm looking at them players and for me, still as a huge Arsenal fan, I'm still like freaking out. I'm like here with Von Reed, yeah, or Ashley Cole, Loren. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like that. Like. <laughs> Bruce. See, that's my killing, my Bruce. Yeah. My Bruce is get turned off that deuce. She won't get with gang and get loose. Boy, boy, boy. Bruce. See, that's my jigger, my Bruce. I used to sip on that screw. But now I might jack with the moves. Yo, welcome to another episode of the Talk Your Talk podcast, the best football podcast on the planet. Today I'm joined by my brother DG, Dan, Dan George from the Arsenal Brother podcast. What are you saying? How's it going, man? Great to be here. Had a good weekend? Yeah, mate. Good weekend, yeah. Um, enjoying some of the sunshine. Um, looking forward to this episode. Uh, yeah, looking forward to cracking on, man. Limited sunshine. What do you think of us on the weekend? I mean, it was a good result. Good 1-0 to the Arsenal, as the song goes, as Aaron Ramsdale said. Um, <laughs> yeah, good to see us have a bit of defensive grit, uh, a new look back line. Um, really enjoyed it, man. Really enjoyed yeah. it. Seeing us uh, grind out a result and hopefully here's to many more. Yeah, we ain't had too many of them proper grind out one nil away wins, you know. So I think mean, you gotta take it as you enjoy it. But I can't like that second half was was a tough watch. Yeah, it was, but it's encouraging signs, isn't it? It's Burnley, you know they're gonna throw absolutely yeah. everything into the box and to see us um actually kind of go toe to toe with them with our yeah. now extremely tall defenders, it's uh it's good to see. Yes, I think that I have to say that as well, like it's 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 difficult because like you don't really associate nowadays anyway, you don't really associate Arsenal with steel, you know, like that nah. like, like solid defence. So seeing that, mm. you know, uh, Tommy Asu winning all his head is that those sort of things is it was, it was it's new, you know. A hundred percent of aerial duels, Tommy That's Asu. incredible. Like he was he was amazing. And Gabriel as well next to White was just Yeah, Gabriel uh, won everything as well. Yeah. No, nah, yeah. good to see you, man. Encouraging signs. Encouraging. We'll see it to the weekend. Obviously, the huge match on the weekend and with the NLD coming up, we have to get a proper greener on. Today we are joined, um, it's a pleasure to say that we are joined by ex-Arsenal Invincible, Justin Hoyt. Justin, how are you doing? Yeah, really good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Welcome to the podcast. How are things? Yeah, really good. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, the weather's been a bit better up here um, in England, so no, everything's good. Um, signs are improving in America, so ooh, everything's good, everything's good. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, we're going to have a little conversation today. I'll talk a little bit about your career. About how things have gone since then, and um, yeah, like I said, please like, um, please hope you enjoy. Um, we'll get straight into it. Dan, take it away. Yeah, so Justin, just kind of kicking it off here. Obviously, um, you said many times you're a boyhood Arsenal fan. Um, you joined the club at the age of nine, um, if I'm not mistaken. You made your Arsenal debut um, the seventh of May two thousand and three um, in a six one win against uh, Southampton at Highbury at seventeen years yeah. old. Just kind of take yeah. take us um, back to that day, like. What was the feeling of making your debut? Oh, it was unbelievable. I mean, for me, I mean, I say this to everyone and anyone I've ever known me. I used to support Arsenal for a long time. My mum used to live on the same road as Highbury. And, you know, when Arsenal used to win things, uh, go on a bus parade um, around Highbury and around Islington, I used to be one of the fans chasing after the bus. And I remember me and my best mate Jerome, we got on the train and went down to Highbury and we was following the, to- the, the team bus um, with our flags, the scarves and the Arsenal shirts. So in that sense, I've always been a diehard fan. So for me then to even make the academy at nine, uh, go through the ranks, playing the reserve team and then get that first call up for the first team and even get an appearance in that game is... Um, something you always dreamed of, I always dreamed of, and that's one goal that I've always wanted to achieve, and I achieved playing for my um, boyhood team. So that's, that's just amazing. I mean, you can't, um, for me, I can't think of anything better than that. Um, you know, even though my dad's a Man United fan, it's still great <laughs> that I was able to achieve my goal play for Arsenal. Mm, yeah, talk us a bit more through the actual debut, though, the actual game. What was the kind of the feeling of actually stepping onto that pitch and kind of like was there a moment of realization where you're like all right like like I've made like did you feel like you've made it at that kind of young age like at that early stage in your career that like you've like achieved what you've always dreamt of achieving no I mean I didn't think of right right this is my first appearance I've made it as a footballer I think it was more of a situation where I'm thinking oh my god I've actually achieved my goal of Mm. playing for the first Mm. team or even getting an appearance for the first team it's something that not many do. Um, that's always been your goal. We you get into the academy. They've always told you your, your goal is to get into the first team. Um, so just to step on the pitch at that time and 
I, to be honest, I don't remember much of it. Um, I just remember being on the bus with um, some of the players, with Ashley Cole, Jermaine Pennant and stuff. Um, uh, and just going in with them, talking to them about the experience, going up the marble stairs. I've got a picture of me going up the marble stairs with my big, huge bag. Um, and just having a smile on my face and even getting on in that um, was a great achievement. I remember uh, trying to wave, find my dad in the crowd and he said to me, he lost his watch, cheering and jumping up <laughs> when I actually got on and when we've done a lap of honour. Um, so I know it was great. I mean, that experience uh, will go with me forever. Mm, yeah, of course. Um, of course, you made your debut in 2003, which was, of course, the iconic um, Invincible season. Tell me a bit about, obviously, you was a young player coming through at the time. What was what was it like? I know you've spoken before about how under under the weight of such legendary players, it was kind of hard for you to find your personality in the team. What was it like trying to find your way into that team? You know, trying to displace players like um, Lauren, of course, um, Lauren, of course, at the time, Patrick Vieira, um, Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp. What was it like with those sort of you know, your boyhood legends. Nah, for me, it was, like I say, and I'll tell you guys, it was the hardest probably time for me as a mm. player, um, for any player to try and break into that team because you see what these players have achieved. Uh, you see what they've done in the game after that. You see what they've done for Arsenal, the way they changed Arsenal, how Arsenal then could change the players. And for any young player or player coming into that team, it's hard to replace them. Even yeah. if you get one game in that team, um, you know if the other player is fit, he's going to play. So to replace a legend like Lauren or even try and knock him off his pedestal was the hardest thing possible. So for me, it was just to learn from them day to day in training, learn how they play the game, take little bits from them, learn their personality, what they do, and really learn that winning mentality. Really, yeah. But no, it was it was it was hard for me to to break in and even bring out my own personality because I'm looking at them players and for me still as a huge Arsenal fan I'm still like freaking out I'm like here with Omri Pierre or Ashley Cole or Ren do you know what I mean and I'm like damn nah, like <laughs> whereas I should have been right I'm in this team let me stay here let me try and win a card you know I'm, I was still in awe of some of the players uh, but nah I mean, you know, it, was, it was amazing what the players done it was hard to knock them off or knock them out Go on, go on, go on. I was going to say, do you remember some of your first conversations with these these players when you first met them? Were there any like moments, like funny conversations you can recount, or things that like maybe some of these players said to you when you first met them? I don't know what I said to them. I probably said hello because <laughs> I was like, oh my god, like do you know. What I mean? uh, but no, I, I mean, I was training with them quite often, mm. and the first thing I remember Pat Rice saying to me is when I used to go over to the first team, he used to say, look. You just need to go over and not be shy and pretend you're like an academy kid. You need to go over and show these players that you actually deserve to be here. So you need to walk, train like them, run like them, do everything like them. And they would take to you. If you go over there thinking, flipping arm, oh, I'm here with the top players here. I don't deserve to be here. Then you won't be. If you go out, do your own, you know, try and bring your own personal stamp on things and you be who you are, you'll definitely deserve to be there. Uh, it's a bit of arrogance, but that's what Arsenal was at the time. And they had that confidence, they had that swagger, you know, that um, any team there was going to play against, they was going to beat, and they had that in training. On the topic of um, confidence and, and winning mentalities, you've spoken about, um, obviously, the, the legendary um, ex-Arsenal captain Patrick Vieira and the effect that he had in your career. What was he like training with him? I know that you said you've been using awe of him and you said that he could change your career going forward. Just the way he was on the training field with everyone, any first team player, he was treated the same, mm. no matter whether he was a world-class player or an up-and-coming player, any reserve team player training with the first team or an academy guy training with the first team. He was just really took you in and really showed you how it was to be an Arsenal player and really set the example for everyone on the training field. And even off it, he looked after everybody, spoke to everyone the same with respect, and everyone looked up as him as the boss. I mean, never arrogant. Um, his personality spoke for himself and really looked after everyone in that training field and treated everyone with 110% um, respect, really. And, and like I say, I really looked at that and him as a key role model and really um, changed the way that I approached uh, my career, really. Mm. What um, player or person would you say had the biggest influence or affected your career the most whilst you're at Arsenal like what kind of one person do you think 
kind of was that mentor or said that one piece of advice that um, you went on to really appreciate? Ashley Cole. Ashley Cole, for one, for me, was the, the one person that I always looked at as the main role model for me. I mean, as I was going through the academy, uh, for me, even when I was playing my first few games, he was one that really took me under his wing and I got to learn from him. And he kind of had a similar experience to me going out on loan and then coming back to, to play at Arsenal on a regular basis. I mean, I didn't reach the, the heights that he did, but I still got to play alongside him, travel you know, alongside him and actually learn. Um, how he operates and how he plays the game. And it was great to have him as a role model because you know, what he done for Arsenal and where we come from, from the academy to achieve such great things for England as well. I got to, to learn a lot from him. So for me, that's a key role model. And certainly how he dealt with um, certain off the field incidents and um, things, I got to learn a lot from him. So he's the main role model and key figure of how I achieve certain things at Arsenal and beyond that. Mm, awesome. Yeah. That's um, when we're talking about that period in, in Arsenal history, you can't you can't not talk about the professor, the gaffer. What was it like playing under Arsene Wenger? We, you, you um, you know the stereotype of Arsene Wenger and how he liked to bring through young players. And of course, he was he was one of them. What was it like playing under him? It was great. I mean, trading with Wenger. I mean, he didn't say too much, but when you know he spoke to you, he spoke to you with respect, told you exactly what he wanted, and always told you to play like you're playing with your friends in the park. Because that's what you you know, and that's how you know to play, and that's when you're at your best and you're most confident. So it was great to have him as a mentor and as a trainer and as a coach. He was just great. His attention to detail was second to none, and you can see why Arsenal um, changed when he come into things, and you can see why Arsenal achieved such great things. But for me, it was a great, uh, great coach for me, and one person obviously that helped me in my career when I left Arsenal. Also, just the the knowledge and education and football education and IQ he had um, that he gave on to me. Mm. Did he ever give you like a kind of a golden nugget or a piece of advice that you've kept by your side for the rest of your life? Like, was there one thing that Arsene Wenger, like what kind of piece of advice did he give you that you've just kind of gone, oh, like I'd never thought of that or mm. wow, what a person. No, to be fair, the only thing he's ever really said was you should always play the game of football and train how you play with your friends in the park because in your friends you know when you're playing like a little five aside or seven aside you play yeah. with freedom you play with excitement you play with joy you play with a smile on your face you enjoy it and then he said if you take that into a game and training you'll play the same way and you will enjoy the game and you'll just play free whereas yeah. if you go into the game tense not playing free not wanting to have fun you won't perform to your best mm -hmm. but if you go out there with you know you care but at the same time you play with freedom you play with a free mind you're going to be able to express yourself and you're also brought into a team for a reason um they've picked you um for your quality so you bring that into every game and every training session and you'll go far in the game mm, yeah definitely um we're going to move forward a couple of generations now we're going to talk about the um the current arsenal um arsenal side um <laughs> do you watch every game would you say you're still absolute diehard arsenal I'm a diehard Arsenal fan, yes. I say to people, it hurts me sometimes to even say I'm a diehard Arsenal fan, especially the way things are going. But yeah, I'm a still diehard Arsenal fan. I, I support them, I cheer them, I hope they do well, I want them to do well. Mm. I try and go to the games if I can, uh, okay. but I do support them. I mean, it's been a painful watch the last year or two. It's been painful, yeah. but I do watch them and I still support them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I was just going to ask you kind of, um, again, a player, well, a, a person that was a player, now the manager of the, the side, Mikel Arteta. What's your take on Arteta as a manager um, at Arsenal? Like, um, do you think he's someone that we should trust? Do you think he's someone that, um, like, has got Arsenal's best values at heart and he will go on to achieve great things? Um, what's your opinion on Arteta? I mean, of course, he's got his best um, interest at heart for Arsenal otherwise mm -hmm. he wouldn't have taken a job he knows how big Arsenal is the club the history and everything yeah. behind it and obviously he's trying to bring in a certain type of style of play that Arsenal fans are used to mm -hmm. um, do we trust him in that he's got the right ideas is it working at the moment probably not will it hopefully yes um, I think we're missing a few key players to be able to really um really get his philosophy and his way of playing onto the field and for us Arsenal fans to say right this is Arsenal's identity back of course it's not going to be easy because 
after us Arsenal fans seeing Arsenal yeah. Wenger achieve great things, Arteta's still a fairly new manager. Mm. And to take a job on like Arsenal, the history it has and the way they play, it's hard to now bring that. Yes, he's trying to learn from Guardiola, but at the same time, it's like he's Arteta at Arsenal. It's something completely different. He hasn't got the same type of players. Um, so I think if given time, hopefully he can... Um, he can turn things around for Arsenal, but at the same time, he's not going to have long. So maybe if we had an experienced manager who knows and been mm. there, we can get the results a bit more quicker. Um, I know it's a project, but at the same time, Arsenal fans want to be winning stuff, not um, fighting the table. We want to be a big team, big five, big four, uh, big five or six again. Okay, very interesting that you said that about um, <clears throat> there have been a couple ex-players that come out and had their... Um, had 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 put, um had their take to say on on our current situation. I think a lot of it has come down to um come down to it about this identity and mentality, which is something that you spoke about earlier about the invincible mentality was um, I know you said it in previous interview as well that you always came into the game looking to win. That was that was that was the ideology that Wenger instilled instilled into you from from a young player. So to see that at at Arsenal now, do you feel like the same mentality is there? I mean, you've spoken about how originally um, at the Highbury and at the Emirates, because of the mentality you had, you'd, or you already had a one up on other opponents because that's that you know you, you, you felt that you was going to win straight away. Yeah. Um, do you feel do you feel that that's changed in the current setup? Yeah, I think it's changed. I think teams now don't fear Arsenal. I'll be yeah. honest with you. Teams now don't fear Arsenal when they go to Emirates or. Arsenal coming to them, they don't fear them. They're going to the game thinking we can win this one. Whereas previously, I mean, even games that I've been involved or watched on the side or even been a fan watching at home, people have been fearful of Arsenal. It's like, oh my God, Arsenal coming here, we're going to get bad. We ain't going to touch the ball. It's going to be a tough game for us. Um, nowadays, it doesn't feel like that. I don't know why that's changed. It shouldn't have because Arsenal should still have that aura about them that we are Arsenal, you know. Man United had that for however many years and they're starting to get it back. But Arsenal for over how many, many years always had that, is that everyone knew Arsenal was, no matter if they was going to go a goal down, they were still going to look like they're going to win the game. And everyone feared Arsenal, but now it just doesn't feel that they've got that. It doesn't feel like the players have that installed in them or it just feels like they've just lost that confidence and mentality uh, within the dressing room um, and obviously if you lose players year by year season by season um, from winning so many games and having that invincible team you lose that year by year of course the mentality is going to change mm -hmm. yeah we've um obviously yourself coming through the Arsenal Academy like you said you joined Arsenal at the age of nine um, Arsenal in their side at the moment have got a lot of very exciting young players that have been on a, a similar path to yourself um have well joined the the Hairland Academy, um, have come through the ranks, made it all the way through to the 18s, the 23s, and now to the first team. Just a few to mention: the likes of Akio Saka, um, Emil Smith Rowe. Um, you've got Ainsley Maitland Niles, a player that's in and around there. Eddie and Kessia. What do you make of some? Obviously, I know some of them much more involved than others. Um, what do you make of some of the young players at Arsenal uh, stamping their authority on the first team? I think it's great. I think it's great to see. Um, over the years, Arsenal have only had one or two or a few players um, getting into the first team and breaking in and really stamping their um, authority and really getting into that starting 11. So it's great to see, especially them growing up from such a young age in the academy to getting into the first team to play them regularly, mm. um, which is great. My only concern is it's just tough now for them to really showcase themselves with Arsenal not playing a hundred percent well uh, and then obviously wanting to win games is going to be a situation where is, is the manager going to keep trusting them or is he going to want to go out and buy experienced players to play and get the result and job done now rather than um, giving these young players a, a game but the young players have done really really well especially Saka and Smith Road have done really really well once they've played um, and unfortunately some of the other young players that have come through the academy um, haven't done well, got into the first team, but have moved on and done well for themselves. So um, it's just a situation where hopefully that they can continue to perform well and, and really carry the team forward and have that uh, fight about them because they've been through the Arsenal generation. They know what it takes. And hopefully they can carry that spirit and, and really try and push the older ones to show them what Arsenal's all about. 
hundred percent. Yeah. Um, I was just going to ask as well. Sorry. Um, the right back situation at Arsenal is something that has been very um, controversial, and yourself being a right back um, yeah. when you were playing for Arsenal. Um, Hector Bellerin was tipped to be kind of that that perfect, that long-term right back that can mm-hmm. go on and carry Arsenal through seasons. But it's just not really worked out for him. And we've had um, multiple people try stand in Callum Chambers, Cedric Suarez, uh, and now uh, take care of Komiashu. Sorry, who's that? Make the Nars. Yeah, make the Nars as well. What do you make of the right back situation at Arsenal? Like, where do you reckon it went wrong for Bellerin and? What, who do you think could be the best right now in that position? I mean, Bellerin was really good until he got injured. Mm. And unfortunately, Bellerin, he had a lot of injuries. Um, and obviously, after injury, after injury, and you're trying to get back from that, you don't always recover the same as, as when you first broke into the team. And it's been difficult. I mean, yes, it's hard because at the time, Arsenal weren't performing well. And unfortunately, he was injured and coming in the team and wasn't performing well. And he was low on confidence as well as the rest of the team. So... Um, not having a settled person in that position for so long is really taking its toll on the team. Yeah. And then dropping and changing in that position so many times, it's like, well, no one knows what who the best person is or anything. But for me, I felt up until I think Bellerin got a few serious injuries and a few knocks, he was doing a great job. Mm-hmm. He had the speed, uh, he had the crossing ability. It was the type of Arsenal right back that they wanted. Um, just unfortunately with the injuries that it didn't work out. And I think the new player, I can't remember his name now. Um, Tommy Ashley. He seems like a really good player. I think he's done a great in his debut, done really, really well. So it'd be yeah. interesting to see how he does moving forward and if he's really going to be um, the right back for Arsenal, what they need. Hopefully, he can continue to perform well in the Premier League. He's very unknown. The veteran story is a bit. The veteran story is a bit similar to yours as well. I noticed when you were burgeoning in the scene, and obviously you had a couple of hamstring injuries as well. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's unfortunate to see. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll rerun the clock. Mm-hmm. We'll rerun the clock to back to your playing, playing days, and um, we'll go back to to be specific. Sunday, the thirteenth of April, two thousand and eight, <clears throat> and Arsenal are away at Old Trafford. And we're two one down, and unfortunately, um, it's in the last. I think you know what I'm going to ask about. I think you're going to. I think you're going to ask for that. Yeah, I get a second. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> and we're in the last last uh, moments of the game, and unfortunately, you're you come up against a tricky Portuguese winger named Cristiano Ronaldo, and um, well, the rest is history. Do you want to do you want to go on from there? <laughs> No, you can you can say it if you want. Like, <laughs> the video, I don't mind either one. I get sent the yeah. video every day, I think. <laughs> and I've been since he's returned back to the Premiership. I think I've been sent that video more times than not. I think I should have uh, saved it every time I've been sent. It. I, mean, <laughs> I think I should have put it on my YouTube. The amount of times I get sent, I'm, I'm sure I would have hit more than a million views by now. But uh, <laughs> no, nah, it's, it's, uh, it's a situation where I mean, he's got the ball one v one, and for me. As a defender, I've always been told, don't dive in. So I'm not diving in. I'm letting him, you know, you can do your mm. skills or do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, you're only going to go in the corner. You're not going to go past me or I'm not going to slide on the floor and you're going to make me look stupid because then I'll definitely be on highlight reel. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I mean, I just ushered him into the corner, jockeyed him like I know how to defend and just shoved him in the corner and he turned his back and I thought, you know what? I've had enough here, you know, you've done what you needed to do. I ain't having that no more. So I tried to kick him. I tried to get the ball, I'll be honest. I tried to get the ball, but I didn't. But um, I wish I would have two-footed him at the time. <laughs> <laughs> if I know it's gonna be sent to me so many times, I wish I would have two-footed him that it would have <laughs> I imagine there's a well, serious injury never got his move away from Manchester United. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't have been the player he was. But, um, nah, I mean. Look what he's gone on to achieve, you know. Mm-hmm. So to even come up against a player like that, it's not a, something I want to remember. But at the same time, it's like you're playing against uh, probably one of the best players in the world, and uh, yeah, hats off to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I'm just glad he didn't um, make me look like a fool or go past me or not make me or nothing, because then it definitely would have been <laughs> something else to talk about. Especially as a young player, obviously you was a very young player at the time. But um, obviously, I was going to go back to the season before that as well. I was shocked to hear about, obviously, you started in the League Cup final against Chelsea in 2007, but I was shocked to hear about an injury that you had about the um, right before the game. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, not many people know about it. I mean, I mean, I spoke about it briefly a few times, but yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Actually, in the warm-up, um, or previously, before the game, uh, I think a few weeks ago, I pulled my hamstring. 
in the build-up to the game um, and I was just recovering from it but it was a game that I was never wanting to, to miss because it's mm. a to help the team get this far and it was like I don't want to miss this opportunity because it might be my last cup final for Arsenal it's, it's my boyhood team it's a, it's a chance to play or win a trophy and be on that um, victory bus after yeah. um, so going into the game I was felt fine everything was good but actually during the warm-up I think I'd done a few quick feet and then went for a little sprint and I actually felt my hamstring. So I knew that I wasn't 100%, but at the same time, I wasn't going to tell the physio or anyone that I'd pulled my hamstring because I wanted to play in the game. Um, and just basically, I was just playing with probably <laughs> a pulled hamstring for the whole game. And it wasn't until the 80th minute or the 85th minute um, that I actually told Gary Lewin, the physio at the time, that my hamstring was completely gone. Um, it's just hanging off and I was literally just walking or jogging um, in that game but yeah it's gone in the first half literally before kickoff it's gone but I was like right the adrenaline will take me through it and if I have to come off after 15 minutes after a full hamstring I come off but um, I managed to get through the game and then I finally realised that I had uh, <laughs> two tears in my hamstring <laughs> I mean I think every every Greener can empathize with that I mean you're living everyone's dream but boy you Arsenal plan playing in a league cup final for your local club but it really doesn't get better than that but another um, um, I think important thing to know about that game as well is that you was in, in that team, I mean, we all talk about Wenger's youngsters. You was you was in a very, very young team. I mean, you played with Denilson, Fabregas, Diaby, Traore, uh, Ali Adier. There's a lot of young players in that League Cup game. What were the nerves like before that game, being such a young player? Things were fine. Do you know why it was? Because we knew that our only opportunity really was in the League Cup. Yeah. And every time a lot of us played was in the League Cup. So it was like, right, this is our time to shine. And really... In the Premier League, a lot of us wasn't going to play, but we knew that if we got far in the League Cup, mm. we could then show how good we are, the youngsters are good, and that we can get into the first team. And a lot of us did actually play in the yeah. first after that. But it was just an opportunity for all of us to play together and, and be gelled. And we've we done quite well in, in the tournament. We obviously we got to the final. Um, so, yeah, it was great. And the nerves were fine. We were all confident going into the game. And obviously, we just come up against a really strong um, yeah. Chelsea side. But we felt we helped, uh, held our own right up until, uh, unfortunately, dropped the scores. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, you were elig eligible to play for England and Trinidad and uh, Tobago. And you rejected a call-up from them earlier in your career. However, you did eventually play for the national team and played three years of international football from 2013 and uh, 2016. What was international football like for you? For me, the reason why I start off by saying the reason why I turned down Trinidad at the time was because I was on the fringes of playing for England, which probably was <laughs> way out of my depth. But um, obviously at the time, you know, you're hearing you might get called up for England, you're playing at Arsenal. Mm. You've played for England for however many years from under 17 right up until 21. So your next step is Arsenal. Uh, it's England, sorry, yeah. a senior team. So when you're getting talks about that and you're playing, that's all you're thinking about. Um, then when Trinidad obviously come and asked me uh, to go in the World Cup, which I wish I did, um, I said no, just because the fact that I technically didn't help the team get them there. Mm. So it's unfair for me then to say, right, I'm ditching England, going to play for Trinidad in a World Cup, just because they've made it, it's not fair for mm. someone else who's helped them get there you know I'm taking their spot basically mm. um, so that's kind of what what my thought process was but now looking back at it I wish I didn't I wish I would have just gone but um, that's a learning curve that's something uh, that I wish I didn't do but at the end yeah. of the day I, I didn't do it and then I got to play international football with Trinidad and I wish I would have gone earlier because it's, it's a great experience unbelievable mm. Mm. No, brilliant um, also another, another big change in your career obviously came in 2017 and you moved to America. You spoke in a previous interview as well that when that move to America helped you regain your love of football. Do you want to talk a bit more about that? As in the position, I know you had a, a, a many years in the championship and from moving from championship or some from the UK to America, what was that change like and how did it help you regain your love of football? Yeah, it was just, just a new fresh, new start, new everything really. And I've always wanted to go to America. Everyone, even when I was going for a tough time at Middlesbrough, my main goal was to go to America. Um, and I remember sitting at home when I was at Mill, funny enough, um, with one of my closest friends. We used to sit and write emails uh, to get to America, to get to the MLS, writing out a CV. 
and we're sitting there thinking, why are you writing out a CV? Like, you've achieved so much. And I'm asking people, like, how'd you get to the MLS? And they're like, yeah, it'd be easy for you. It'd be easy for you to get to America. And it just, it wasn't for whatever reason. It was tough, you know? Um, so I, to, I wrote to so many clubs and right, and it didn't work out. Um, and then I went to Mill, Dagenham, and it was just kind of like, you know what? I'm not really enjoying playing in England anymore. Um, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying the players I'm playing with at Dagenham. I had a close friend, Andre Bucard, there I enjoyed playing with. So that was good fun. Um, but I just wasn't enjoying it. I mean, uh, the games I wasn't really enjoying. I just didn't feel like me. Do you know what I mean? I just wasn't comfortable where I was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I always wanted to go to America, and I knew that if I got that opportunity, I would love it and I would want to stay there. Um, so luckily I got that opportunity via social media funny enough contacting the manager and contacting back I went for a trial and really go into a, a team like Cincinnati where we had 25,000 fans minimum um, playing there was just something else and it was like a, me playing back in England and Europe just in America um, so that really made me fall in love with the game again and the fans and just everything again I really enjoyed getting ready for the games, training and everything and just being out there really, uh, like I say, uh, brought me back to love football again rather than being bored and not really enjoying it and wanting to be on the football. Yeah. What do you make of the whole um, situation with Jack Wilshire currently? I don't know if you've been able to see some of his recent um, interviews, but can you emphasise with him a bit with the whole, he said he's slightly fallen out of love with the game and he's been without a club now for however long. Do you emphasise with a player like Jack in that situation? I do, yeah. I do and I don't. Um, just because I know how hard it is. Yes, everything's all right when everything's well for you. You know, you're playing for Arsenal, everything's good. Everything's glory when you're playing for other teams like West Ham. Everything's going right for you. Mm. As soon as you get um, maybe a bad injury or you find yourself having to train on your own or, you know, your agent's trying to get you clubs and your, your agent might be telling you, yeah, you can go here and then you find finding that you're not. It's probably the hardest time in football and probably the loneliest time and probably a time mm-hmm. that he's never had to experience before in, in his life because he's always been at Arsenal, been looked after, then gone to West Ham and been looked after. So now you find yourself in a situation where it's, where does he go? Mm-hmm. Basically, yeah. it's, it's, it's really mental. I mean, I've had it a few times and stuff, even now I'll go through it. Sometimes it's, it's really mental how mentally tough you are um, to want to keep going and want to fight for, for what you want to do. Um, it's easy enough to give up, but um, I know what kind of situation and what he's going through because I experienced that mm. here. And like I say, I was writing emails to teams in America and getting rejected. So it was like, do I give up? No, I used to wake up every morning, probably six o'clock, go running, knowing that if I get any opportunity, I'm going to take it. Yeah, uh, I don't know what his mentality is or what his goal is. If he does really want to play or if he uh, wants to go out to America or if he wants to stay in England, I don't know. Um, I just know that I wanted to carry on playing and I had a goal and a mindset and a target and I wasn't going to stop until I achieved that. Mm, yeah, I mean, I think we've heard that potentially he could be uh, going to train yeah. with, with the Arsenal first team. So. Like, do you reckon that'd be a benefit for him compared to just waking up and going and training on his own in in a well a, effectively a field somewhere or with some other a lower league team? Do you reckon being in and around that high well elite world class kind of atmosphere at Arsenal training ground would be a benefit to him? Yeah, it'd be great for him. I think it'd be fantastic for him. I think he'll he'll then realise what it takes to be uh, a top player again. He was a top player at Arsenal. And- just mm-hmm. training in that environment with the world-class players, you'll probably um, fall back in love with mm-hmm. Arsenal again and, and playing football and want to get back to, to playing at that level. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, in another way, teams will see him training at Arsenal and be like, oh, right, he's ready, he's training with the first team. Yeah. He's training with these world-class players, uh, maybe playing a friendly or two if he mm-hmm. can, and they'll mm-hmm. see what ability he's got and, and how he can achieve things. Unfortunately for Jack, he's had a lot of injuries. Yeah. yeah, what's also affected his career is the injuries. Um, but it, I mean, he's a great player. When I saw him coming through the first team, I always said you'd be a, a top player for Arsenal. And anyway, you just have to have the mental toughness and um, the willingness to to want to play and achieve great things. Yeah, yeah. A bit, right. And a bit on the topic of your um, career at the moment, so I know you're obviously without a club at the moment. Um, so where, where do you where do you see yourself going now? Obviously, looking for another club coming into a time. And I'll talk also a bit about the Justin Hoyt Academy as well. I know you launched that recently. 
Yeah, so I mean, uh, so last year when I was in America, I was playing for a team called Miami Beach. Uh, for whatever reason, it didn't work out after six months. I was still there, but um, due to ownership things, we then set up our own kind of team. So I was helping um, the owner, Paolo, um, set up the team in Palm Beach. We've got a team in Palm Beach now yeah. um, that we're kind of helping run, and I'm helping him run. He's the owner, so I'm helping him in the front office kind of thing. And I was playing for them um, right up until lockdown, until I headed back. Um, so I was still playing with a team called Palm Beach Stars in uh, West Palm Beach there. So I was keeping fit, keeping healthy, helping them young players. So I'm still going, not playing right back, uh, playing centre back at the moment. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, yeah, so I don't have to do too much running now. I'm getting a bit older, so I'm, I'm just sitting <laughs> at the back, spraying a few passes around, <laughs> um, letting all the younger ones do all my running for me. Um, but no, I'm more uh, interested in helping this team, uh, Palm Beach Stars grow, helping the players develop, helping us reach uh, a high level in uh, American soccer, whether it be NISA, USL, and hopefully one day MLS if, it, if the opportunity arises. Yeah. And just help the, the team now as a, as a staff member and as a coach. And then um, alongside that, I've set up my own kind of academy, which will be run in Florida, because um, that's where I'm going to be based. Uh, just helping certain individuals, one-on-one -on -one coaching, defending, mental coaching. I've got a physio that I work alongside with, Anks there, to help me, uh, you know, get the players ready for college drafts. Just anything like that, really, just to give them um, kind of like a head start on football and give them my knowledge and pass it on to, to help them really develop their game and just help them become better people, um, really. So that's what the academy is about. Um, it's not just something that uh, I want about 100 kids <laughs> just for the sake of it. I actually want to try and help individuals achieve great things in the game or just become great people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean it's great. I've learned so much from so many top class players. So I'm hoping to to pass that knowledge on to some players and help them achieve their goal. Because at the end of the day, everyone's goal and dream starts somewhere. So hopefully it can start with my academy and they go on from there. Brilliant, brilliant. No, I can't, I can't wait to see what happens with that. Just to um, just to end as well. Obviously with the big North London derby coming up on the weekend. You know, as a green, I got asked you. We have to win this. <laughs> on, no try. We have to win this. We have to win this game. Yeah. Go on, give us, give us a score prediction. What do you think? Ah, I think Tot Tottenham are struggling at the moment, which I'm happy about. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm buzzing. They're struggling at the moment. I mean, Arsenal not playing the best, but um, I think it'll be a turning point in Arsenal's season um, if we was to win this. I think the fans will appreciate us beating Tottenham, and I think they'll gain that confidence back in the team we can beat Tottenham mm. just because obviously the whole London derby the way things have been going for the team the start of the season I think you win that it gets everyone happy again buzzing yeah, again you know what I mean about Arsenal if you lose that then it's like oh my god here we go again um, the rumours start they want the manager out they want certain players out um, it just gives a, every Arsenal fan a, a, a downer and it gives Tottenham a, a boost again and you're thinking nah nah let's kick them while they're down you know <laughs> Um, so, no, nah, if we win this game, I think it hopefully will be a turning point for us. We've got some players back now, so let's hope it um, turns in our favour and we get some of the players um, scoring a couple of goals. I've got one or two players in my fantasy league team, so that's <laughs> 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 so we get a few points and a few goals this weekend. Brilliant, brilliant. Let's hope, let's hope Arsenal and get the get the three points on, on Sunday. But, I think um, it'll be 2 new Arsenal. 2 new Arsenal. Because I don't think they're going to score. They're struggling right now, Harry Kane. We can't, oh, come, we can't say that Tottenham aren't going to score. Harry Kane will score a penalty. He always does. Every time. He always does. No, no, and it's no, Craig, no. Craig Paulson's the ref yeah. as well. Oh, yeah. no. Definitely going to get a VAR decision. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the last time Craig Paulson was the ref was when David Luiz got sent off. Yeah, he was. And then you saw him, um, see um, Moutinho in him after the game as well. Yeah, yeah, they do. Oh, my word, yeah. Uh, so we're struggling then. <laughs> it's going to be a long weekend, but yeah, like I said... Tough weekend. <laughs> it's going to, be a, going to be a very long weekend, but yeah, like I said, um, thanks to Dan for coming on. Um, Arsenal, the Arsenal Bible podcast will be linked in the description. And again, thank you to Dustin. We'll be um, paying attention to the rest of your career. I hope everything goes well. Hope Arsenal get the three points this weekend. But yeah, like I said, thank you for your time. It was, it was a pleasure and, and I hope to hear from you soon.
Yeah, no, cheers. Thanks so much, Ashley. Thanks yeah. for having me on the podcast anytime. I know I talk too much about football, <laughs> but that's all I ever do is talk about football. So I can talk about football all day long. So thanks talk for having me on the show. Talking about man. football all day long. Do you want to give do you want to give them an announcement? <laughs> no, it's all right. No. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, wherever you watch this on YouTube, Apple, um, Apple Podcast, Spotify, um, wherever you listen to us on, thank you for joining us today and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. Thanks so much, man. Loose. Bruce. See that's my jig of my Bruce. I used to sip on that screw, but now.